Welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere with your host, Chris Parker. And welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere. This is Chris Parker. And perhaps you've noticed something different if you're watching on video that my beard is gone. And we are now in Movember. Uh, if you have watched the episode with Michael Fisher, the head of Movember Europe, you know what that's all about. I urge you to go look at that. Uh, Movember is a global campaign uh, raising money and awareness for men's health issues and men's health around cancer issues, prostate cancer, as well as mental health. So please go to Movember.com and see how you can get moving and get uh, involved. If you are so interested, you can also go to the uh, uh, page here um, for this episode and find uh, the link to Movember.com for my campaign where you can get involved and also uh, make charity donations if that is something that you would like to do. Now, I have Mark God uh, with us, and Mark is a fascinating entrepreneur working on multiple things, one also in the health space, and uh, another one also in the, I think, in the mental strength and mental health space. So there is some, some parallels from the my Movember mission and what Mark will talk about. Um, Mark, God, welcome to the discussion, to the conversation. Uh, we've known each other for many, many years, uh, but for everyone else, can you please share with everyone, Mark, what do you do, Mark, and why do you do it? Right. Thank you, Chris, for, um, for this invitation. It's uh, really uh, an honor to be able to be on your podcast. So thanks a lot. So what is it that I do? That's always an interesting question, uh, of course. <laughs> um, well, let me talk about what I'm fascinated with first. And that is, I'm fascinated about growth. You know, how can um, me, myself, but also the people I work with, my clients, my friends, my environment, how can we, you know, grow and continue to uh, keep a, a beginner's mind to learn, to explore, to wonder, and to uh, grow uh, through experience, through, you know, maybe reading, learning from others. So what I do is, uh, you know, I'm a, an explorer of life. Uh, I try to enjoy life to the fullest and, uh, and grow in the process. And I'm also in my work helping other people to do so. And I do it in different, uh, different ways. Uh, you already spoke about um, two dimensions, the health space, physical and mental health. So basically, I've got two activities. One is a business, which is called Fit20. It's a, uh, a franchise, a global franchise. We're active in nine countries now. And I bought about five years ago the license for Belgium and Luxembourg. And it's a personal training franchise. So we have, uh, let's say, micro uh, studios in which we receive clients once a week with a personal trainer. And we uh, give them a high-intensity training in slow motion. So... Um, in fact, it's a strength training and we bring them to the limits of their abilities. And if you do that, and that's not so easy to achieve, but we, we try to do them. We have a good system, we think. Then um, their, their body, but not only their body, also their mind and uh, their, uh, their whole, uh, whole self will improve dramatically fast. And it works for any age and any level of, of fitness. So that's Fit20. Uh, I bought a franchise and I'm now building that out um, in Belgium and Luxembourg. And then the other element to growth is uh, I'm a business coach, a leadership coach, where I work with my clients uh, to, and they can be corporate uh, executives, they can be uh, entrepreneurs or even individuals, self-employed uh, individuals, professionals. And I help them to, uh, with simple techniques, to uh, manage their energy, uh, to manage their priorities and uh, and to get the most, you know, to make the most out of each day and do it such that all areas in their lives work. So not only work, the business, but also um, their relationships, their health uh, and um, their, their purpose, their passion, uh, and of course their work. So, and I'm fascinated yeah. with that. And I learn as much myself from working with my clients as they do uh, from me uh, yeah you are a 
the, probably the, 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 the most adamant lifelong learner I've ever met in my life. And I have benefited from Fit20 and your coaching um, in different ways. And I think we'll get into some of the experience later on in the conversation. However, I'd like to loop back to the why do you do this? Because you are you are involved in many things and 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 really focused on these two domains, which are quite complementary. What motivates Mark God? Well, um, I think there's maybe just there's two things that come to mind. One is you know for as long as I can remember, I have been an extremely um, curious person. I always wanted to know how things work. I always wanted to figure out stuff. Uh, from a very, very, very young age onwards. And, uh, you know, taking things apart, whether it was a, a radio or, a, uh, you know, or, or maybe even, you know, looking in nature, how things work, or try, just trying to figure things out, either by experimentation or by, by thinking about it. And uh, uh, so I've always been fascinated by, by, by trying to understand how things work, by deconstructing it. The other element is... Um, I think that throughout my, let's say, uh, professional life, and I've been working for 20 years in corporate uh, corporate world, uh, worked globally in different companies, um, I've come across many people, too many people, uh, I guess, who are not really happy or satisfied with their life. Uh, but they're not, they don't seem to do much about it, or they don't know what to do about it or how to go about changing it. And these can be elements of fear, uh, elements of... Uh, uh, so fear of failure or fear of uh, being criticized by other people or uh, maybe overwhelmed, they just don't know, or maybe it's the, uh, the good that gets in the way of great. And, and that for me is, um, is, is very difficult to see because I've always been a person that has tried to see the opportunities in, um, in my environment. So within the constraints of my work, or my busy daily schedule, uh, or my home home duties, or maybe physical limitations. I've always tried to look for um, where are opportunities to to explore, to discover, to to change, to experiment, and to grow. And but yet I see other people who are not doing that, and I see lots of opportunities for others that they don't see themselves for themselves, or they they are too fearful for just trying or giving up their their current situation and i find it very uh, i find it intriguing but i also find it uh, if it's if it pertains to people that are close to me i i find it a little bit sad in a way yeah, because uh, you know we only have so many days in our lives nobody knows how many the only thing that we do know is that every hour that we have spent we won't get back and so why are we spending time uh, with people or on activities or in jobs that don't give us full satisfaction, that don't give us the opportunity to grow and learn and just stay in miserable jobs. And, and that for me is, is, is so I can't, I can't comprehend. So the two motivators, I, I guess, is my curiosity and my love of life, my love of learning. Uh, and at the same time, what I see with people close to me and also a little bit further away as to how they are stuck and how I think that there are paths for them to a bigger, better, brighter more beautiful life as i uh, as i call it beautiful and the and the word you used for that was growth and, and is that what you mean by growth a bigger bolder more beautiful life is that, is that growth or is is there well, another dimension it's a good question um i mean growth is it doesn't always mean that it, it growth doesn't it doesn't mean bigger or better um or it can also be simpler Right. In the end, you know, what is it that we really want? It's, it's not necessarily, um, you know, if you take Aristotle's uh, good life, yeah, happiness and success, then um, I don't believe it comes from having more stuff, you know, because, yeah, we need a, um, uh, we need a, um, a roof above our heads. We need some convenient means of transportation that's efficient, that helps, of course. Um, we want to have opportunities, freedom. Um, but I don't think that having more stuff necessarily means uh, a bigger, better, more beautiful life. But what I mean is, you know, if we think about the things that are really important in the end, uh, uh, you could ask anyone anywhere in the world, it comes down to the things that you, uh, that are, are sometimes, that are very difficult to really comprehend with the mind, I think. It's maybe more 
sitting here in the heart, but things like beauty, uh, creativity, uh, inner peace, um, freedom, sense of freedom, those kind of things, um, love, great relationships, they are things that we, we know when we have them. We know when they are in our lives. Uh, and in fact, now that I share this with you, Chris, I feel it in my body with the sensation um, that, yeah, there it is. And so I think I just wish more of that, uh, that inner joy, you know, that inner peace, that um, creativity, curiosity. I wish that for everyone. And I think if, we, and, and, and first of all, for ourselves, uh, because if we, if we love ourselves, if we accept ourselves, if we really can enjoy the small things, uh, then uh, that to me is, is, is being, living a bigger, bigger, more beautiful, better life. Yeah, beautiful. And, and um, coming back to the, the areas or the channels for which you bring this to, to life, uh, Fit20 um, is a remarkable proposition. I've been a Fit20 customer in the Netherlands, so, so you know, with the, in, in Amsterdam. And um, that was absolutely brilliant. And unfortunately, Corona sort of put a, a stop to that because I'm not going to that, that office building anymore. But literally, it was 20 minutes a day. Um, under, you know, I don't want to cut high intensity, but there's a, a really a, 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 a progressive weights in um, being brought in. Uh, you have a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-two coach. Um, I really enjoyed getting sort of the reports to see how my strength was growing over time. So there's a visualization to it. It was um, absolutely brilliant. And I think in the Corona time, you know, that is also a, a, an amazingly safe way to get your fitness in. Um, and you have two customers, meaning you have the franchise managers or, or owners, if you will, uh, you know, and then there's also the, the customers of the, the franchise itself. Can you share a little bit about the vision behind that? And, and, and how does that fit in with your, um, your ultimate life goals sure sure i mean health is something that we never think about until we don't have it anymore right it's it's, not, it's just physical health it's a thing that we take for granted um maybe the same goes for mental health um you know and um but once we get older uh, if you just think about it look at some of the statistics one in two adults develops lower back pain somewhere um, in their life, you know, and that's one of the most, I would say, debilitating um, uh, injuries, uh, chronic injuries that you can have, because it's something that's with you all day once you have it, and it debilitates you in your physical movement, in your, um, in your, in your creativity, in your, in, in everything you can do, you, you know, it, 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 it um, works negatively on your sleep, um, you start to doubt yourself. So it's very debilitating in that sense. Um, and that's just one. If you look at other things like uh, the statistics on people being overweight, but also with elderly people, the number one cause of death with elderly people if, if, is if they fall, they break something, they go to the hospital, and most of them leave the hospital in a horizontal position. Why? Because they get operated upon, they catch a, a bacteria, and, uh, and they never, their, their body's not able to, to recover from that or to cure itself. Um, so um, also the cost for healthcare, I think it's the second biggest expense in the Netherlands and in most other countries, healthcare costs. You know, it's tens of billions uh, that we're spending on curative healthcare. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of uh, focus given by governments or uh, pharmaceutical companies or insurance companies to the preventative part. So what can we do as individuals to take care of our own health, to add healthy years to our lives, you know, to, in, to improve the quality of our lives. So health is something that we take for granted until we don't have it anymore. And um, now Fit20 just came onto my path by coincidence, it was a couple of years ago. Um, and um, a friend of mine said, well, they're looking for a master franchisee for, uh, for Belgium and Luxembourg. It was Belgium at the time. And later on, I, I, I got Luxembourg as well. And um, is that something for you? And I felt like, well, I'm not sure because I wasn't, um, you know, educated as a health professional or fitness uh, trainer. On the other hand, 
um, you know, it was intriguing enough to have a conversation with the founder, who is currently still the uh, the CEO, and um, and I was immediately intrigued by it. I felt, you know, to be the target customer, uh, first of all, and um, and I felt it was a solution that works in this era where we all overly busy. Uh, we know that we have to do more exercise, but we don't get to it. We're not very motivated. We don't have the time. And then here, here comes this guy who tells me, well, well, we've got this, this system, this Fit20 technology that's been, that is academically supported by lots and lots of research and still new research coming out every week. Um, and it works. And it works on a very broad uh, cross-section of the population. And particularly uh, for a group of people that is underserved by existing solutions. Why? Because it's a high intensity training and most people can't do that. They can't go to CrossFit because they don't have a physical uh, fitness uh, for that. But what we do, which I think is brilliant, it's, um, it's a 20 minute workout, but it's um, in slow motion. So you are on machines. There is a coach there and the coach guides you towards momentary muscle failure which sounds scary, but it's a good thing. And it's actually where you bring your muscles and we work on the biggest muscle groups because we try to activate as much muscle ma mass as we can. We bring it to its limits, to a point where you just, where, where it's the battery is empty, if you will, and the muscle gives up, literally. So we are invoking the fight flight response from you know, the prehistoric times. And what we know, what research has shown, is that if you do that with muscle tissue, that it will start to overcompensate. Why? It's as if it's giving a signal to the brain that says, I have been in danger. You have to make me stronger. And next week, you know, we can, we can adjust the weights such that they go, that they're a little bit, a bit heavier. So that this exercise never gets easier, it will remain as, as difficult as it was the week before. So you were challenging people, not only physically, but also mentally, uh, because people want to give up uh, or, or the body starts to object. So that's why you need a personal coach there. So I was intrigued. Why? Because it's accessible for people of all ages, let's say as of as soon as your body has developed, fully grown and developed, so let's say as of 2022, all the way up to 95 years old. And people that are, you know, on average, have, have an average level of fitness. We have ex-top sports people. And we have people who just came from a physiotherapist who came out of recovery. They did, they did their 12 sessions and then they, they, there's, a, there's a black hole because there's nothing where they can go. And, and we can help these people and we guarantee an improvement of at least 20% in the first three months time. So we reverse aging. We slow down the aging process. We build muscle mass with all its benefits. So I was so intrigued uh, because, um, you know, you can have all the, the, all the vision in the world, but if you don't have a healthy body, then life sucks, you know? And with most people, it happens around their 60, 65 year, five year of age. That's where the chronic problems start. And then they still continue to live till 80 or longer, but, that's, but they don't have the life they could have. So that's what intrigued me about Fit20. Mm. And, that, and that's very much in the, the physical body. And um, what I love about, you know, conversations with you and time we spend together is, is there's a combination of the, of the physical and the mental, um, perhaps even spiritual, you know, because I'm, I'm a believer, a knower that, that disease is oftentimes caused by dis-ease. You know, so if you are mentally or spiritually you know, out of balance or discomfortable or, 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 or carrying um, rage, anger, you know, frustration, then these things, you know, can manifest themselves in, in unfortunate ways. And um, your, your other work, which I know you help your franchise owners as well as, you know, entrepreneurs like myself, um, is coming out through the markgod.com um website, if you will, or, or sort of that brand as well as, and I cannot wait for it, an upcoming book on the topic as well. So can you share a little bit about that? You know, what's manifesting there? Because, uh, you know, that is sure. something that you've been working on for quite some time. Right. Yeah, sure. Well, that's a lifelong fascination, as I said, with growth. And um, so that's more my, um, my leadership coaching. I think that's the best summary. 
uh, I mean, some call it business coaching, uh, but I, or team coaching. There's different, uh, I would say, formats, different ways of working with people. I do work with individuals, with teams and organizations. Um, but I think the essence of it is leadership. And uh, it starts with your personal leadership. You know, then there is leading others. And then there is leading business or le leading, you know, uh, communities or... Uh, and um, um, But leading self is the starting point, uh, your personal leadership. And um, I believe there's so much we can do as individuals within the constraints of our current situation to go to the next level in our life, you know? Um, and I'm fortunate enough to live in a, um, in a free, relatively free part of the world. You know, where I've got everything at my fingertips. Uh, I can say anything I want. I can do anything I want. Um, not, that's not for everyone. Not everywhere in the world uh, that's the case. But still, anyone, I think, can. And there's many, many examples where people uh, from countries that are less fortunate than, than where we are, also have shown that they have come out of their situation to different levels. Why they took charge uh, of, of their lives. And I believe very much that, you know, of course our circumstances, um, but we all have a free will. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a conviction, I believe, that we have some sort of control over what we do. We, we cannot con necessarily control what happens to us or what happens in our environment, um, but we can we can uh, decide how we respond to what happens. Hmm. And now what I see in the coaching industry is that um, it, I feel that it's being made, uh, let's say coaching is being made too complicated. It, the, whole, the whole industry um, of developing processes and systems and tools and methodologies and uh, certification programs and what have you, um, promising aspiring coaches that they, they can become the best coach ever you know and then as marketing of course they need to learn how to market themselves and i want to simplify that because i think that you know if, if i try to bring it down also with my book to to some yeah well i've kind of distilled my philosophy on on let's say personal leadership uh to seven keys seven breakthrough keys to transform my business and my life and that is something i'm going to describe in my upcoming book, God Mode, uh, the seven breakthrough keys to transform your business and your life that hopefully will come out somewhere, you know, towards the end of the year, early, early next year. And um, it's something that I've been working on for, well, at least 15 years, if not longer. Uh, and it's been, let's say, a collection of wisdom from, you know, people that I've met, from books that I've read, but also from my own experience. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, I think it's time-tested principles. Uh, lots of these concepts have been discussed by others in different ways. Uh, so I'm not sure I've invented anything new. Uh, and that's, that's sometimes frustrating because you're looking for, well, is creativity, is it coming with something brand new? Or is it kind of perhaps repackaging age-old wisdom into, yeah. uh, in, into new structure? Yeah, and I think, um, you know, it doesn't, everything doesn't have to be fresh and new and in, inventive. What, what I really appreciate is, is what, I, what I do think is new is actually the, the structure and the anecdotes and your life experiences. Um, and there is quite some parallel between what I'm bringing to the world in, you know, to simplify thinking in order to accelerate businesses. Um, so there is, there is some, some, definitely some parallels. One, one of the exercises that, that you had me do was, really around, you know, looking at the activities of your day. And, and maybe you can refresh us on that. I think that because you had to sort of choose on what was enriching or joyful for you and, and then do more of that as opposed to what you can outsource or stop. Can you can you give a, a little snapshot of that little intervention? Because that, that for me, the beautiful part was it was it was a guided process and people don't have to wait for the book. You can call Mark right now and have a, you know, a, a personal treatment. Um, but it was it was walking through these seven steps with all these little exercises, not little, you know, maybe they're little in in words, but profound and like, oh, oh shit, you know, you know, thought provocative, you know, provocative uh, um, impact. And, and one of those that um, was very, very similar to simplicity is 
um, do what you're strong at or good at. What was that exercise? Do you, do you remember that off the top of your head? Right. Yeah, so one of the, uh, the keys, so this is key number three, is which I call be unique. Um, and we all know this idea that, you know, we have to improve uh, our uh, weaknesses or, um, but as, and it takes courage because it's about doing some, some exploration, some soul searching, and there are different tools to uh, where you can, can figure out well, what are your key strengths. Of course, one of the, the, the simplest tools is just ask other people. And so how do I show up in your life? You know, send an email to uh, 15, 20, or maybe more people around you. They can be colleagues, they can be um, uh, family, they can be uh, friends, uh, and ask them, well, if you look at me, you know, how I uh, interact with you, how you, how you see me operate in the world, what are the things that you, um, that you feel that I'm good at and that I should do more of? What are the things that you would suggest? Well, you might stop doing that because it's irritating. Uh, for instance, continuously uh, interrupting people uh, or uh, uh, thinking that you know it even better. Uh, why? Because out of your enthusiasm, you want to just add ideas, but maybe you have the opposite effect. And what are the things that you want to, uh, I should continue doing? And um, so part of, the, part of that exercise is getting some input either by doing some, some, some uh, tools like uh, Strength Finder or Colby, which is really good, or asking others for, for feedback or do some soul searching. But then um, what's really powerful is if I ask you to make a list of all the things that you really hate doing, you know, the things that, that don't give you energy, the things that you don't like doing, that don't, they don't fascinate or motivate you, just make a list, right? And these are the things that you need to stop doing. Now, some of these things have to be done, but it doesn't mean they have to be done by you. So find other people that can do these things. Now, one of the things that I that need to be done is the, for my businesses is the administration part, bookkeeping, but I hate to do it, to do it but I love to have my books nicely done. Um, and one of the thinking mistakes that we make is that we think that if we don't like it, it, if it doesn't motivate or fascinate us, that nobody will like it, everybody will hate that task. And the opposite is true. For every task you can think about, there is somebody that loves to do that work. In this particular example, I set out to find somebody who, whom I could delegate all my admin work to. It's a virtual assistant. Her name is Anya. She is just, you know, a gift from heaven. Uh, she always has a big smile when we have our weekly conversation. She says, Mark, my only job is to take work off of your plate. And, uh, and then she's always joking if there's one or two action items left for me. Oh, sorry. Now I've given you work. That was not, the, but she does, but she is doing it better than I did. She's doing it uh, probably faster and with a big spot. So, um, she is better off because she is doing the work she loves to do and I'm better off. So first part of the exercise is make a list of the things that you hate doing that don't give you energy, don't motivate or fascinate you and try to get rid of those. Then the second one is, well, you have a list left of things that you are pretty good at, but that, don't, that are not necessarily your really very unique best ability, right? Um, there are things that you are uniquely good at. And in fact, this is an exercise that, I was part, that was partly inspired by my own coach, Dan Sullivan. So I'll have to give him credit uh, as well for it. So, and, and by the way, all of my seven keys are, let's say, concepts rather than single exercises. So in each of those key areas, these are all states of being. One is be unique, and that requires not only this exercise, uh, and, and again, the second part is the things that you're good at, but that are you not know, unique at, well, those you want to delegate next. So that what's left is only mm. the things that you are uniquely good at, uh, that, that you are in flow, mm. that you can do better than anyone else, and that you could do every all day long without even getting paid for it. So that's that exercise. Yeah? No. But par part of that is um, not only doing the mechanics of that exercise, but also having the courage, and that was difficult for me, and I see that with my clients too, to tell other people, uh, look, I choose to only work on the things that I'm uniquely good at, rather than, oh, because our, our society expects us 
um, that you also have to do the things that you don't like to do because it cannot all be fun and enjoyable. Well, so you, it needs courage to, to actually say, call bullshit on that and say, no, I'm not buying that. And <clears throat> Mark, I think the, um, you know, for the entrepreneurs of startups, scale ups, you know, corporate leaders who are also entrepreneurs, um, I cannot think of one that I know of that would not benefit so incredibly, even from just this little intervention. Mm -hmm. And for me, the seven keys program was, was, it was a whole salad of these and it had your um, caring yet firm driving hand on it. That was uh, hugely beneficial for me. So I think if people are triggered by this, um, you can find more there at markgod.com. Um, balancing that with the physical part, you know, I think for me, a, you know, a, a, a perfect mix would be some some meditation, uh, you know, and some some walking in the forest and just get that spiritual connectedness, and some um, physical aspects from Fit Twenty, some mental as aspects from you know the Seven Keys process, and then whenever I speak with you, um, there's always a, a list of intellectual things I can go and snack on as far as books and videos and experts you can talk to. Um, so you're really bringing it all to the table. And I really appreciate that about who you are and, and, and what you are. So um, thank you. We are, we're, we are um, wrapping it up, but before we, we come to a close, one, another thing that I've been impressed with you is, and we, we were playing around with the words earlier, eating your own dog food or drinking your own champagne. Um, this is also a, a lifestyle for you. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not like, uh, um, you know, so, someone who, who is, read a book 20 years ago and, and has ignored it, but then is, you know, peddling this as some sort of snake oil. It's really driving you in your life. Can you share just a, a, a brief snap on how this has benefited you um, before we wrap up? Cause that's, I'm really curious about that myself. Sure. Sure. Uh, and that's two sides to that question. Um, because, you know, you call, because I'm a coach and an entrepreneur, you know, it's, it's not only uh, telling people what to do from, from the, the wisdom or the books or whatever it is. It's also, I'm living it as an entrepreneur and also as a person. And, uh, and then you are, you know, it keeps you, it keeps you humble. It keeps you with two feet on the ground. And, uh, and, and so it's an interesting process where I, I kind of uh, circle uh, through life and I try to, uh, to apply my own concepts, but also there's a big part of forgiveness of um, being gentle also with yourself. Uh, because, um, you know, the first person we need to love is ourselves. The first person we need to accept is ourselves, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, um, and it's so, it's, and that's life. Life is a lifelong process of learning. Uh, so maybe to wrap it up, um, there's two little things I want to perhaps share. Um, so one is, um, if you look at the relationship between happiness and success, you know, for me, happiness is a choice. And I'll share what, what our some practices that will help get you to a higher state, relatively spoken, of, of, of happiness. And success follows happiness. There's some studies done in the US uh, by Harvard that show that happy salespeople are way more successful than people who say, well, I need to be successful first and then I can be happy. Happiness is not conditional. Happiness is a choice. And success is the result of a process. And success is, in fact, nothing else than making progress, you know, every day uh, and acknowledging that. And it doesn't have to be big progress. Now, there's a lot that I'm trying to share here in a few in a few lines, but what I try to do, first of all, which I would recommend to anyone, is start a morning, morning process, you know, because if you win the day, you can win your life, okay? It all starts with, well, how can I make the best out of this day of what I, that I have here in front of me today? So every morning, there's a few things I, I do, um, and, and they are they also relate to, to this le increasing my level of happiness. So one is um, there's there's gratitude. So think about what am I grateful for that I have right now in my life. And that's that's the I think chief among all uh, practices is gratitude. There is um, giving. You know what can I? Is there something I can do for someone? Is it a, a little phone call, a little message, a little uh, postcard? A little acknowledgement. How often do we get a, a pat on the shoulder? How, many, how often do we get acknowledgement from somebody? Not often, right? Mm. And it doesn't cost anything. You know, there is, of course, a bit as journaling. Uh, just write down 
reflect a little bit on your day. There is um, exercise, of course. Go for a walk. Uh, uh, do your Fit20 exercise. Do a little yoga. Um, those are all elements that really help. And there's meditation. And I'm not necessarily very big on meditating because um, I believe very, I don't believe necessarily in that I have to kind of seclude myself and go into the mountains. I want to be present um, and I want to be in a, you know, kind of a, an accepting state, an observing state where I observe the thoughts and feelings rather than trying to hold on to them right in the middle of a busy day. Just take one minute and say, hey, what's going on inside me? Connect my mind and my heart and my body. Feel, ob feel, be an observant and be the one who observes your thoughts, your feelings, your, your sensations, mm. your emotions. And so then I think that you can really very quickly get to, you know, a much better state from which you can continue to, to enjoy life mm. and to grow and to prosper. Yeah, I love it. Um, and the, the, the morning routine for me, which I've, I've further crafted through our, our work together, as you know, I still I'm, I'm, I am, um, you know, a, a novice at meditation. And for me, it is it's very much a mindful meditation. So for me, it, it's really of connecting with my physical self and my spiritual self. And what, what I do is I, I do that before I make the day's activity list. So if I can really become connected with my own self and my own intuition and what's going to, what fills me with joy and, and what, what my, what my, my, I guess my inner spirit, I don't know, my creativity wants to do that day. And I, and I really try to follow that um, intuition. And, and for me, that's really about that mindful connectedness. So um, one of the things you mentioned along the way was giving, and I will pull on that little uh, hook to wrap up that for for everyone who again has noticed that I am without a beard as part of the Movember campaign raising money and awareness for men's health and so what I would really suggest you to do in, in the spirit of giving is call someone who you might not have normally spoken to and just check on them and ask them how are they doing you know so if we achieve anything with Movember and it is that triggering of connectedness um, one of the um, um, horrific stats that I've learned recently from November is every minute around the world, a, a, a man uh, takes his own life. And that those are, are, are oftentimes people who are, are, are extremely deep in despair. And, and it could be that, um, you know, your outreach and just letting someone know that they're there can open up a channel for them to talk and, and discuss and, and start a journey of healing. So um, in the spirit of giving that, that Mark uh, mentioned, um, reach out to people and just ask how they're doing. If you'd like to give more, you can go to movember.com and there's other ways to do that. You can, um, I, one, of the, one of the ways, of course, is moving your body through the month of November as well as donating money. So that's um, um, start a conversation. As they say, shave a life, um, change a life, save a life. I learned all these things the other day. It's great. So, uh, Mark, thank you so much. If people would like to know more, go to fit20.be for the Belgian practice. Um, of course, there's also many, many in the Netherlands, as well as um, seven other countries uh, we've heard. And markgod.com, where you can learn more about the book. And if you have been excited, and I hope you have, by what Mark is sharing. Um, he might have some space in his agenda because as you heard, he's quite busy to take on some uh, personal coaching clients. So Mark, thank you so much for joining. It's been a delight as always. Um, thank you for giving during this wonderful conversa conversation. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Learn more at ebillion.com slash podcast.